The goal of this video is to demonstrate how AWS Cognito can be used to register and log in users from your Unity game. I'll also highlight how to authorize direct calls from the AWS SDK to access resources. I created a basic sign up and login view that exercises the Cognito functionality, but I'll be focusing on the two main Cognito components, which is user pools and identity pools. The Cognito user pool is used to authenticate your users and is where their account information will be stored. The identity pool is how we authorize which services we want our users to have access to from the game client. While there are a few different ways to authorize access to AWS resources, I'm using the identity pool approach because it provides us credentials required to make direct SDK calls to the AWS resources from our game. And it also allows us the option of allowing unauthenticated users to access our resources in the case where you don't require everyone to have an account. If your plan is just to route everything through an API gateway proxy, then onto some Lambda function or server, you probably don't need to use an identity pool. I believe you can just use API gateway with a user pool authorizer to accomplish your goal. If your game needs to be able to call directly to any of the AWS resources, then follow along because that's the focus of this video. The first thing we'll do is set up the user pool. A Cognito user pool is used to store all of our users when they sign up. It establishes the sign up and login methods and also gathers any additional attributes we've configured it to capture. To get started with creating your user pools, head over to the Cognito section and hit Manage User Pools. You can see I already have a couple created, but let's go ahead and create a new one. Go ahead and name your user pool and then step through settings. So the first thing is how do we want our users to log in? Should we use username or email address or phone number? All these things can be configured here for you. I prefer to use email only. So for this demo, that's what I'm gonna select. So it says allow email addresses here. I'm not gonna do phone numbers or usernames as well. So we're not gonna go that route. Keep this checked. And then down here, I also want to make sure that we have an email as a required attribute and also preferred username. This allows users to actually create a username but not have it permanent. So if you were to select this username option up here and allow them to put in whatever username they'd like, they would be stuck with that forever. So doing it this way allows them to change their username in the future if they wish to update it. Go ahead and hit next step. I recommend doing something a little higher than this, like at least 13 or 16. Uh, but for demo purposes, to make this real quick and easy, I'm not going to require any of this stuff. However, you definitely should in your production game. Let's just go ahead and leave the rest default and hit next step. I'm not going to enable multi-factor. If the user needs to recover their account, we'll use the email. Okay, so down here for the verify attributes, let's keep it on email and go ahead and hit next step. For this game, let's just leave everything for the default here. We'll send our verification emails through Cognito, but for production, you might want to investigate using Amazon SES to send your emails from. So for sending email verification messages, I prefer to use a link. It makes it really easy for the user. They just have to open the email and click the verification link versus trying to handle the code. And I'm going to leave the rest of this default so if you want to customize the email message, you can go ahead and write whatever you want here. This little thing here is going to turn into the link. So just make sure you keep that somewhere in this message. Hit next step. We don't need any tags. I don't want to enable this right now because it's a little bit more overhead. So go ahead and hit next step. So which app clients will have access to this user pool? So we need to go ahead and add an app client for our Unity game. Go ahead and just name it whatever makes sense to you. So here's the expiration configuration for your refresh, access, and ID tokens. So just to give you a brief overview, let's take a look at the Cognito docs on tokens. So the ID token contains claims about the identity of the authenticated user, such as name, email, phone number, or any other attributes you may have added. So the access token is what is sent along with your Amazon API request for authorization. It contains scopes and groups and grants you access to authorized resources as defined in whatever policy is attached to your user. In this example, it will be the policies I add to the default authenticated rule attached to the identity pool. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And the refresh token is used to refresh the access or ID tokens. This allows the user to stay authenticated without having to keep asking for login credentials. Once the refresh token expires, you will have to log in again. The default is set to 30 days, so in theory, you can keep using a refresh token for about a month without requiring a login. And please take some time and familiarize yourself with this topic. It's critical to keep your app secure. 
So come down here to generate client secret and uncheck that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to embed any client secrets in our game because anything in the client is really not secure. And then down here, we're going to uncheck the Lambda trigger, and then we're going to go ahead and check the username and password based authentication, and also this secure remote password protocol that I'll show you how to set up in the code. Okay, so now hit create app client and next step. This is really cool if you want to get into this, if you have any customizations that you want to do. So if you want someone to do something before they sign up or before they authenticate or after they authenticate, you can set different Lambda functions to perform whatever actions you'd like. Hit next. So I think we're ready to create this pool. Let's go ahead and hit create pool. So you want to note the pool ID here. Keep that in mind. And also, if you look under the app clients, this is going to come in handy in a minute once we start reviewing the code. And then under show details, you can see our token configurations here that we'll talk about a little bit more later. After your user pool is created, head over to the app integration domain name section. Here you'll need to create a unique domain name to support the email verification link that we set up earlier. So go ahead and put something unique in there, check availability, make sure it's available, and then go ahead and hit save. Now that the user pool is established, we can link it to a Cognito identity pool where we configure the authorization for our users. That means the identity pool will have attached roles and policies that allows us to grant access to certain resources we want them to have access to. You can add policies to grant permissions to whatever you want, but be careful to give access to only what they need. For this demo, I'll leverage the default rules that get created as part of the identity pool creation and attach a policy that allows authenticated users to invoke a specific Lambda function from the game. This demonstrates that you can authorize access to specific AWS resources. So we're gonna link our identity pool back to the user pool. But first, I'm gonna show you how to set up the identity pool. Go ahead and hit create new identity pool. So go ahead and name it something meaningful. Enable access to the unauthenticated identities here. That allows you to make requests to the server, like if you need to sign up. You can't be authenticated if you're just hitting the sign up endpoint. So that's what this allows us to do, to be able to hit endpoints while we're not authenticated. Then let's come down here under authentication providers, expand that. And under the Cognito section, you're gonna need the user pool ID and the app client ID. So let's go find those from our user pool. So under general settings, you can see the pool ID here. So copy paste that. And then the app client ID that we created earlier is under app clients. And then go ahead and copy this app client ID, paste it in there, and then go ahead and hit create pool. With the creation of the identity pool, it creates two roles, one for authenticated and one for unauthenticated identities. Go ahead and hit allow and we'll talk more on that later. Under platform, go ahead and select Unity and just take note of what you have here. You'll need that identity pool ID later on in the code. In order for your user credentials to do anything, they need to have the correct policies attached to allow access to certain AWS services. So if your app wants to access Lambda or GameLift, it must be configured to allow access. In order to do that, you have to link the users under the user pool to an identity pool. And I showed you that earlier, but those policies for unauthenticated and authenticated identities are really basic and don't give us access to anything. So even if you log in, you still can't call any of these services. So I'm gonna show you an example of how to add a policy that allows you to have access to a Lambda function. So head over to the IAM section and click on policies and create new policy. I already know what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste the JSON here. So this policy allows us to invoke a Lambda function of the name Cognito Auth Demo 1. So any user with this attached policy will be able to invoke this Lambda function. Go ahead and hit next, review, let's name it, and go ahead and hit create policy. So now that we have our policy, let's go back over to the identity pool that we created earlier. Let's edit it. And you can see here that we created this authenticated rule called Cognito Unity Game IP4 Auth Rule. So let's go find that under the IAM Management Console. So under roles, I can see Cognito Unity Game IP4 is right here. Let's do the auth rule. So the reason why we use the auth rule is because the user would already be logged in at that point, and then they would be able to invoke that Lambda function. So let's go ahead and attach that policy, search for customer managed, and I named it game Lambda invoke four. So go ahead and check that and attach policy. So any authenticated user that was part of this identity pool will have access to invoke that Lambda function. And there's nothing to save here, so you can just hit cancel. 
So the first thing we need to do is come over to the project settings and scroll down to API compatibility level and set it to .NET 4.x. And this is important because it's gonna support the SSL TLS connections when the APIs are being called. So you'll want to enable that to make sure that all your communication is gonna be encrypted. And you can see here on the SDK for .NET, there's a special note for Unity. You have to use a version 2018.2 or later. And also, like I just said, set it to 4.x. Okay, so once you have that set, let's go ahead and add all the plugins. So you can check the repository, but I do have several AWS drivers I've added to the project. So this block here are all gonna be part of the AWS SDK download. This one will have to be built or downloaded on its own. And finally, these last three will be built together. And again, I have the instructions for how to do all these in the description. Let's take a quick look at how this account interface is set up. I'm not going to go in too much depth here, but all the important details are under this canvas object here. The options container establishes the links between all the buttons, input boxes, and text to the input manager script. I've also added the authentication and Lambda manager scripts, which we'll review later. The interface is split into two sections, unauth interface and auth interface. This was just to make it easier for me to show and hide the different components based on whether or not the user was logged in. So let's do a quick demo to illustrate how this works. I'll go ahead and log in. Once I'm logged in, it shows us the welcome screen with a start game and logout option. Let's hit start. So I just set up a new game scene here as a placeholder for the gameplay. And just so you're aware, I do make a call to the Lambda function we set up the policy for earlier in the video. That's just to demonstrate that our authenticated user can make API calls to authorize resources, and I'll touch on that code a little later. So feel free to check out and download that project yourself to get a better understanding on how everything is set up. This Unity project is a game client, not a server, but a client that demonstrates how to use a login and sign up view to register and authenticate users with Cognito. The authenticated session information enables the Unity client to make direct authorized API calls using the AWS SDK on behalf of the user. The project's main scripts is this UI input manager and then this authentication manager, which handles this whole process. There are a few other support classes that are a little outside of the scope for this video, but I'll let you check them out on your own. This script is what links all the button clicks and input text to the options container game object. Right now, I have a set of components that are displayed based on whether the users are logged in or not. Each button action is linked to its own method and uses the authentication manager to call the authentication lifecycle functions. As in the case here for the sign up, the authentication manager sign up function is hit. We do the same thing with login, log out, and also the refresh token. If you notice here, I designed the refresh token method to be called every time this script is started. That means if the game is started or the scene is loaded, it always attempts to refresh the token first. We do this in effort to keep the access token alive, which allows our user to stay authenticated without having to prompt for email and password each time they launch the game. I keep the tokens in the persistent store so we still have access to them if the game is restarted. This ensures we can always make these refresh token calls as needed, and I'll touch on that more in a minute. Okay, now onto the Authentication Manager script. This handles all the calls to the AWS APIs. It also keeps the credentials and the user and identity pool settings to make these calls possible. So the Amazon Cognito Identity Provider Client object is what makes all of this possible. We initialize it in the awake function, given the anonymous AWS credentials object and region your user pool is in. Then we have a very similar setup where there is a corresponding function for each lifecycle method. So if we look at the signup function, we start out by building a signup request, and then we have to attach the attributes that were required in the user pool configuration. And then of course we use our provider object to make the signup request. If the signup request is successful, we return true and we know that it worked. So let's take a look at the login function. Here we build a Cognito user pool and Cognito user object. We create the SRP authorization request with the password, and then we authenticate with this start with SRP auth async function. And just a quick note on the SRP function, you can see here that SRP means secure remote password protocol, which helps to simplify the authentication process of the Amazon Cognito user pools. 
It is a secure password-based authentication and key exchange protocol that solves the challenge of authenticating clients to servers securely. This process allows us to retrieve the session tokens we talked about earlier and is what Amazon recommends to use. A successful login yields the AWS credentials that we'll use to make our API service calls later. Next, let's take a look at the refresh session function. This is where we attempt to refresh the user's access token to keep them logged in. We pull the cached session tokens from the persistent store, make the refresh call with our refresh token auth request, then save the updated ID and access token back to the persistent store. At this point, we have a refresh set of AWS credentials that we'll save off to the class variable. I also created a get credentials method so that other scripts in the project have access to it if they need to make authorized API calls. Finally, the signout function. Here we make a call to the global signout method which logs them out of Cognito and invalidates the tokens. A quick note here about the signout functionality. A single user can authenticate to multiple client types, like a website, a mobile app, or a game, etc. But in the .NET AWS SDK, there doesn't appear to be a way to just log them out of the game client. So by calling this, you're essentially logging them out of all devices. There may be some kind of workaround for this, but I'll have to investigate another time. So let's take a quick look at the Lambda Manager. This script doesn't really do anything, it's just an example of how you can use the authenticated user credentials to make an authorized direct API call. So what that means is the policy we created earlier allows our users associated with the identity pool specified above to have permissions to invoke the named Lambda function. So all this does is illustrate that an AWS service, in this case Lambda, can be called directly using our authorized AWS credentials. So the key takeaway is that you can build a policy that authorizes users to make whatever supported API calls you want from your game. Be it Lambda, API Gateway, S3, or GameLift, you can do that through the authentication and authorization process demoed here using a Cognito user pool linked to an identity pool. You can also add support for other identity providers like Google, Facebook, or GitHub to give your users a choice on how they wish to authenticate. Thanks for watching.